Hey, how's it going? Today I wanted to show you a few things that I do to my finished repo projects before I store them in my archives so that they take up less space and can be accessed easily at any time. So in front of me, you see a project. This is my latest single that I just finished producing and releasing. So now this baby is headed for the storage. This is by no means the largest of projects out there at a relatively modest 99 tracks. But let's go to the title bar of the project, hold command and click to open its folder path. And we can see that this project is currently four and a half gigabytes plus in size, but we can easily bring this size way down. So for now, I'm just gonna duplicate this folder to keep as our control group and let's close this and head back to our project. So this particular project was recorded in a studio and when we were done comping it, I just exported multi-tracks and brought them in to produce in Reaper. So when we do that normally, we make sure every file we bounce starts at the beginning so that when we import it, all the tracks sync up automatically. The downside is that all these files, as you can see, have a bunch of silence baked in. So within Reaper, I can get rid of these silent bits trimming all the items to just where they contain audio and I do this as I go but if you don't that's your first step go through the project get rid of all the silent bits watch the video link above for how I do that now Reaper is non-destructive so even though I did trim out all the silent bits weeks ago I can still come today and trim them back to their original length but in order to let me do that, Reaper holds on to all these silent areas in your project directory. So simply trimming them within the project won't do anything to the size of the source files. So do your trim. And for me, I'm going to do one last kind of check in my project for any audio that I may not have trimmed yet. Or maybe I have duplicated and hidden a bunch of tracks. Or maybe there were some tracks that I recorded and they just never made it to the final cut. So you make the judgment call on whether you want to keep that kind of stuff in or just remove them. But once you do all of that the next step is to go to file and clean up project directory and this will show you any files that are in your project directory but aren't referenced anywhere in the project Again, this is something I do regularly as I go. So I only have a couple of files here, but once you do your general cleanup, you may have a bunch of stuff here you can delete that won't affect the project at all. So just click Command and A to select them all. I personally take the box to move them directly to my trash, click delete, hit okay to confirm and off to the trash they go. Now, since that was only a couple of files, I don't expect this yet to make too much of a dent in our overall project size. Another small clerical step I like to do is to select all my tracks, open the action list, and if you have Repack installed, search for this action. MPL delete bypassed effects from selected tracks. This again won't affect the project size at all, but it will make your projects load faster in the future. This is also your chance to save whatever effects chains and track templates you want from this project for future use, which I highly recommend you do. Let's get to the meat of the matter. If you really want to make your projects smaller before archiving them, it's really all about getting rid of the aforementioned silent bits of audio. And to do that, I'll go to file and choose consolidate slash export tracks, which will open this menu. So I'm going to show you three methods of doing this, each with their own pros and cons, and we'll get to those as we cover each one. So the first method is fully future proof and it's DAW proof, meaning that even if you decide in the future not to use Reaper as your DAW, anymore, or if you plan to pass your projects off to users of other DAWs, this method will retain your project files in a way that you can easily and quickly import into any other DAW. It's also useful when preparing a recording project for the mixing stage. I'm going to gloss over some of the finer details, but in the blog post, I will get into all the nitty gritty of all these options. Up here, I'm going to choose entire project. Over here, I'll choose all tracks. This will automatically choose every track with at least one item on it and exclude any parent track with no items on it like this one right here or any auxiliary tracks that are only receiving signal from other tracks to process in parallel. This next box I'm going to leave unticked and this is important to do for DAW proofing your project. With this option ticked off, we will essentially be rendering everything as multi-tracks once again. For example, on track five here, I only have two small items, but with this box unticked, we will be simply printing that track as one continuous audio file. So for now, untick this box and we will come back to this in a minute. For sample rate, I'll choose 48. Here you can specify the number of channels. I use auto here, not to be confused with the auto 
arrow source file option. In the blog, I'll talk about the difference between these. Resample mode, again, is only relevant in certain contexts, but here I always choose Extreme HQ. This again won't affect the file size either way, it will only affect the render time. So at worst, this will make no difference and when relevant, will give you the best quality of files. In the next menu, you have some format options. So you can go for FLAC, which is lossless compression. So this will further reduce the size of your project, but do beware of this option because not all DAWs are able to process FLAC. Reaper can, but Pro Tools, for example, is not able to do that. And down here, you can even choose MP3 or OGG Vorbis. And these two will really, really make your project size just <laughs> tiny as heck, but these are lossy formats. So the quality of your archive files will be degraded. I personally don't recommend doing this. I'm happy with Wave. And for bit depth, I'll choose 24, same as my project this next box to write the broadcast wave file chunk onto my files. Doing this will bake in some really useful metadata onto your files that can help later when you are searching through your project archives. You can also embed the project tempo. So when you import these files in another DAW, you just get prompted to set the project tempo. And this is especially useful if you have tempo changes in your project. And finally, if you want, you can bake in your markers, regions, both or just markers or regions that start with an Octothorpe symbol, what the young kids call hashtags. And these will just be baked into your audio files as cue markers. For this project, I don't think I need them, so I just choose do not include. Next up down here, you can export your MIDI events. So something you may have noticed about Reaper is that your project directories never contain any .mid files. That's because Reaper by default saves all MIDI events and information within the RPP file of your project. If we are to use other DAWs in the future, I will choose to save these as separate .mid files I can easily import into another DAW. This is also overall just a safe option option. .mid files weigh zilch. It's basically just text. Next up, you can choose a naming convention for all the files we're about to make. These also use wildcards and we have recently covered wildcards. Link to that goes up there. The default here is track number dash then track name and then dash consolidated. I personally just prefer to remove that bit. You do you. Down here, we can set a directory for where these files will be saved. So I'll go to browse and I'll create a new folder here and choose open. So now everything we render in a minute will go there. This next box we will untick and I'll explain what it does in the next method. You can also here choose to save a brand new Reaper project in the same directory if you want, but I'm not gonna do that right now. And finally, I can save my current project at this moment in time, which, uh, you know, why not? Let's do that. Our project is currently unsaved as you can see by this asterisk up here. Finally, we are ready to process, hit it. And this will take a minute or two. In the meantime, I should warn you that consolidation will not bake into our file any track effects or track envelopes, but it will bake in item effects, item envelopes, as as well as kind of stretch markers and any rate or pitch change. If you do want all your DSP, including your track effects processing to be baked into the files, then you should just use the render window. In this case, I just want kind of like the raw unautomated version of my files. So I'm using this window. So there we go. Here's all our files here. And it's 3.3 gigabytes, which may seem like more than a gigabyte of improvement. But actually, if I expand the original project and just look at the audio files, all the media in this project is only 2.3 gigabytes. So this method actually increased our process project size by nearly a whole damn gigabyte. And we can see why if I open this folder inside, we'll see, well, a couple of MIDI files that were saved, but otherwise every file is 54.8 megabytes or 27.4 megabytes. So they're all the same duration. Every single file is a duration of my project, except that some are stereo and some are half as long because they are mono files. So even on our track five, where we originally just had a couple of small items, the consolidated version is now a three minutes long stereo wave file, which is pretty heavy. So while future proof and DAW proof, this method by no means gets your archive files to the smallest number they can be. However, it is very useful if you are, for example, taking a recording project, maybe with tons of recorded takes and punch-ins and tons of kind of like useless trimmings of audio and discarded takes, and then turning that into a mixing project. And in those cases, this method will not only make it easy to send to any DAW, but it will also end up actually bringing down your project size. Anyway, I digress. Let's actually actually bring the file size down on this baby, shall we?
So for the second method, let's once again go back to File, Consolidate Export Tracks, and we're just gonna change a handful of these options. The first two boxes will keep as is, but this time I will tick this next box, ignore silence shorter than. The Reaper default here is 30 seconds, but I find that to be way too long, so I set this to five. And what this basically means is for tracks that have a few items with silence between them, like this one right here, if the silence is longer than five seconds, instead of kind of gluing these bits together it'll just print multiple files so this option seems to be a misprint it should really say ignore silence longer than but I don't know maybe that's just me we also no longer need to write the BWF chunk here not that that will affect the size of the files too too much but all the info that this chunk will save is in our project anyway Similarly, we can keep all the MIDI just in the .rpp file. And down here in the directory, this time I'm going to choose the same folder as my original project directory, which for me is always a folder called audio files inside my project folder. Finally, and most crucially, I'm going to tick this box to update project with consolidated files. Some of my files have like weird names on them. They may have been glued and re-glued and maybe frozen, etc. But once we print the files, all these items will be replaced by the new file we're about to create and hit process. So in the second method, our primary aim is to reduce the size of our project files. This will of course rely on you sticking to Reaper in the future, but honestly, even if you don't, I'd just say use this method. You can always just quickly download and install Reaper in five minutes, and then you take another 10 minutes or whatever, consolidate them using the first method, and as a reward, your projects will be significantly smaller in size as you're about to see. So once again, it took barely two minutes to complete this operation. All the items in my project have been updated with our new file names. They still keep their color, all the automation is intact, and on some tracks with more items, they are incremented. One more time, let's go back to our directory. Now it's 3.19 gigabytes from the previous 2.3, right? Wrong. So what Reaper did do is get rid of those extra silent trimmings and replace all our source files with these shorter renders. So for example, if I trim these items here back, they immediately start to loop because there's nothing left to their left. However, all those originals still exist in our directory, but I can go one last time to file, clean up project directory. And this time we can see that there are 90 extra files that are unused. And those are all the extra silent bits, trimmings, uh, discarded takes, all the stuff that we will never ever need, select them all by command and A, remove them, confirm this, save the project, and now if we go back to our directory, would you look at that, we got a drastic reduction in the project size. We went from 3.19 gigabytes to under one gigabyte, and if you do this to larger projects that you didn't record elsewhere, you will see sometimes the size gets to about 10% of what it used to be before. But hold on, why is our project still more than three gigabytes in size? Where's this extra two plus gigabytes coming from? Well, first off, we have some autosave backups that were created in our file. These are created every five minutes with my preferences, just so I don't lose work in case of a crash. But now that I'm done with the project, I doubt I would ever need to pull any of this crap from my archive. So in the trash they go. This WAV file is my final mix, so whatever, I'll just put it in another folder. Let's keep that. Then we got these really huge files. So this first one is our manual backups. Every time I hit command and S during this entire project, that's been documented within this file here. So again, I think I'm very unlikely to need this, you know, three years in the future. So I'll move this to trash. This next file contains our undo history. So if I do keep this, I can, you know, open this project in three years and undo my way back to a certain point. But who really needs that? <laughs> Not me. The rest are some save as projects. I can probably afford to lose these. Again, this is your judgment call. But as you can see by deleting those in a few simple steps, we went from a project that was more than four and a half gigabytes to it's now being under one gigabyte. All the fat has been trimmed, major, major shrinkage, and now Bob's my uncle, baby. This is ready to be archived. It shrinks? And now for those of you who are still with me, I got a very special treat. I'm gonna open this copy of my project that we made at the beginning, and I'll show you how to do all of this really quickly with a single action. 
So for this method, I'll open the project and when I'm ready to consolidate, I'll simply select all my items by pressing Command and A, come up here to my toolbar where I have this script by the awesome x -Rame called glue items independently and I'm just gonna run it. So this one does take slightly longer, but when it's done, you will see that this action not only keeps all my items, but even all their names will remain the same, all the fades and even crossfades between my items, all of that will be fully preserved. So once it's done, one last time, clean up my project directory, save the project and close it and we're done. We basically kind of arrived at around the same size. Once I get rid of my backups, we are once again seeing massive savings in terms of hard drive space. So methods two and three also let you keep your project and all your effects and automation and your overall kind of folder structure and routing, all of that are preserved. So to me, one of these two methods is the way to go when it comes to archiving your projects. That's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned from it. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.